Hi, I'm Beryl, and the theme for today's video, if you can guess by my earrings, is corn. So we have five corn dishes from five countries, and I think some of them might surprise you. Hi everyone, my name is Evania and I live in Washington DC in the United States, but I grew up in Guadalajara, Jalisco in Mexico. Today I want to tell you about a beverage called atole de elote or corn atole. The word atole and elote both come from the Nahuatl language. Atole de elote is a type of drink found throughout Mexico and the surrounding countries. To understand this drink, I want to explain to you the difference between elote and maíz. Corn is referred to as elote when it is fresh and on the cob. Corn is referred to as maíz when it is off the cob and it is dried. Maíz is what we usually use to make tamales, tortillas, that sort of thing. Atole is served warm and it is thickened with maíz flour or cornstarch and it can range in flavors from pecan to chocolate to strawberry. The one I'm sharing with you today is flavored with elote. That is right, it is a corn-based beverage flavored with more corn. We just love our corn. This flavor of atole is one of my favorites because it celebrates the sweetness of fresh corn. It is a mild flavor, sweet and cozy beverage to enjoy on a rainy day or for breakfast. This dish reminds me of late summer road trips with my family. Usually when it is fresh corn season, you can find stands along the road selling tamales elote or atole elote. I would always ask my family to pull over and get this for breakfast for me. I think you should try this drink because it shows the versatility of corn and the way that my culture in Mexico celebrates that. Enjoy, buen provecho. Bye everyone. I went with Mexico first because this is more of a breakfast dish, so we'll kind of progress from breakfast to end of day dessert. Ah. I have been to Mexico a few times. I filmed an entire video there actually, which is really fun if you wanna watch it. I've linked it up Thank here. You. I don't think I've ever had this drink. It smells very corny, corn-like, and also smells very cinnamony, cinnamony. Okay, I just feel like that whole sentence was a hot mess. <laughs> it smells a lot like corn and cinnamon. It's thick, so I, I feel like maybe it's a spoon drink. Whoa, I think I can sip it like this. The flavor is kind of like a mild corn pudding. It's a little bit grainy, but not grainy in your mouth. Just like it's not a thin liquid. I wasn't sure how I was gonna feel about this originally, but the more I sip on it, the more I'm like easing in and I like it. Okay, this mug, however cute it is, this is too small. I can't hold it and the cup is burning me. Ah. If you like the taste of corn, I think that you would love this. If you're somebody who doesn't love the taste of corn, I'm not sure. But as we learned, there are other flavors of it. It's just got this kind of like semi-thick creaminess that's just really enjoyable. I like it. And I put little bits of corn, so it's got a little bit of a little pops in there. <laughs> I wanna mention the art behind me. It is made by Mystic Multiples. They are also the artist for this month's Patreon art club. Everybody is gonna get this alligator print. Mystic Multiples is actually Sarah Welch and James Beard. They are based out of Houston, Texas. Sarah is the drafts person and James is the printmaker. I'm really excited that they are the artists for this month's Patreon art club because I love their prints. I have definitely been eyeing their alligator prints for a while for myself. So I was excited that they agreed to make some prints for us. If you are interested in joining the art club, the link is below. Okay, let's do the next dish. Hi, my name is Mansi and I am from India, Madhya Pradesh. The dish that I want to share with you all today is Bhutte Ka Keys. Bhutte Ka Keys literally translates into Bhutta, which means corn, and Keys is something grated. So in Bhutte Ka Keys, we take grated corn and then cook it with some oil, butter or ghee, and then temper with some spices, and melt to it to give it a rich creamy texture, and then top it with some lemon, and garnish with some coconut flakes, and there you go, you have a good Bhutte Ka Keys. I like this dish because this is very simple, sweet salt, creamy dish and especially in the winters or in the rainy nights it's a perfect dish to have with your friends growing up i never had this dish because this is not a very 
famous dish in all parts of Madhya Pradesh and not a part of my culture. So I had it when I moved to Indore, and uh, there the dish is a really big thing, and you get it in every street food market. For me, this dish is basically all about college nostalgia, good memories, and good friends. But if you like the texture of grated corn and uh, really like the sweet sour and the, and the spicy situation over here. I'm sure you will like it and you should give it a try. I'm keeping the corn earrings for the episode because they're the only corn earrings I have. <laughs> the smell is super interesting, very corn forward, but also all of the spices are really coming through. Oh. Ooh, I like this. Ooh, it's a little bit spicy. I only put one green chili in. Oh, and red chili powder. Mmm. Okay, this is very interesting. Very interesting. I think what's so interesting about this is that I'm used to corn being slightly sweet, and in this instance, it's slightly sweet and slightly spicy, and the texture of it is very different from corn texture that I'm used to. You can taste the mustard seeds and the ginger. It's really nice. My in-laws, who are staying with me right now, had never heard of this dish before, and I like how India is such a huge country. There is so much food diversity there that People can talk about a dish that they love and somebody just one or two states away will have never heard of it. That's so crazy. I mean, I guess it's like that everywhere. Like there's a lot of dishes I'm sure from the South that I have no idea what they are. But in America, it's just different. So I don't know. I don't know where I'm going with this. I loved it. Let's take a moment and talk about the sponsor for today's video, Tipsy Sake. Tipsy Sake is actually the largest online sake store in the United States. I have always been a huge fan of sake, but I find it a little bit difficult to order because I don't know that much about it. I usually rely on either a waiter or somebody at a shop to make recommendations for me. And Tipsy Sake is actually quite like that. They make the shopping experience for sake quite simple. Their aim is to break down the barrier between consumers like me and all of you and the sake itself. So they offer educational content, tasting notes, even notes from the sake makers about their products. I'm very excited about their sake club where every three months they send you a curated box. Each box comes with six 10 ounce bottles and all of the tasting notes that you need to learn about and enjoy the beverage. You'll also have access to virtual tasting videos, a beginner's booklet, special membership pricing, unlimited free shipping on regular orders, and access to exclusive events. Because I am partnering with them, we did get a discount Discount code, you can use my name Barrel at checkout and it will give you 10% off all of their products. Or Barrel 30 for $30 off your first sake box. If you are interested in sake, I honestly highly recommend them. They're great. Okay, let's get back to the corn. Hi, I'm Dami and I live in Lagos, Nigeria. And the corn dish I would like to talk to you about today is called Adalu. Adalu is a dish of black-eyed peas and corn cooked together in a sauce that's made of palm oil, tomatoes, peppers, onions, and spices and seasonings. The savory taste of the beans in the sauce combined with the sweetness of boiled corn makes it so comforting and delicious. I like Adalu because it's, it's just delicious. It's smoky and it's savory and the taste of the palm oil and it's a little bit spicy. I'm not sure that I would say it's common across all of Nigeria, but it's very popular among the Yoruba people, which are people from the southwestern region of Nigeria. Atalu gives me a lot of memories from my childhood because it makes me think of helping my mom in the kitchen to make it. And by helping, what I really mean is eating as much of the cooked corn as I can and lingering in the kitchen until it was cooked. I was a very picky eater as a child, but this is one of the few dishes that I would happily eat, especially um, the corn because it's soaked in all the sauce or not the sauce from the beans and it's just very yummy. At Alu, I would say it's kind of an everyday dish when corn is in season. So when there's typically a lot of corn available, then we would eat Adalu. Some people like to eat it with gari or plantain or bread, but for me, I just love soft fried plantains on my Adalu. I think people should give it a try because when you think of Nigerian food, you tend to think of 
jollof rice or puff puff or quote unquote fu and egusi. But this is another dish that many people don't know about and I think it is very delicious. It might take a little bit of work, but I think it's totally worth it. Thank you. I just want to say before I try this that the reason that you never saw Dami's face was because she wasn't totally comfortable having her face on camera, which I absolutely respect. So with that being said, let's try the Adalu. Mm. Super delicious. Tastes like kind of the best baked beans I've ever had. <laughs> it took a really long time to cook down though because I used canned black eyed peas and the dish just kept on not looking right. So I kept on adding water, covering it, letting it cook down, adding water. Ultimately, with the amount of time that I spent cooking the beans, I probably could have started with non-canned beans and just hard beans, but that is neither here nor there. I feel like, mm. I feel like with a dish like this, it could be kind of a bean heavy dish, but I actually think that the corn here balances everything out really nicely. It's a little bit sweet, but very kind of meaty from the beans. I think if you had this with another piece of protein, this would be like an amazing main dish or as a side for whatever else you're having, it would kind of blend with almost anything. So 10 out of 10. Hi, my name is Alira. I'm 21 years old from Jakarta, Indonesia. And I live in Saxon, Germany now for my study. I'm gonna show you my jasuke jegung susu keju, or it's just milk corn in English. Basically, it's just corn, milk, and cheese. They are steamed for a few minutes until the cheese is melted and the corns are warm. I really like it because it's sweet and the cheese is melting in your mouth. I mean, the cheese is so stretchy when you scoop it from the bowl into your mouth, which is satisfying. It reminds me of my childhood because I had it like every week with my family after we went from the grocery stores on the weekend. It's actually a street food, but because I'm here in Germany, which is really far away from my home, I would say it's a homesick food. <laughs> I think you need to try this one as a new dessert or if you want something new to try, you can just make it very quickly. And I hope you enjoy your food Selamat makan and guten appetit. Okay, we have entered the sweet side of corn, which I don't know if I've ever had a corn dessert before, so I'm pretty excited. And this one's like cheesy. <laughs> it reminds me of the corn that you can get at a Korean restaurant, the sweet corn with the melted mozzarella cheese that is so good. But then, because you have this kind of condensed milk pudding, which is very reminiscent of the Brazilian pineapple dish that I just made, and of course you've got chocolate sprinkles. <laughs> it's got like, it's very sweet without, he well, I guess condensed milk is pretty sweet. I mean, look, you probably have all of these ingredients at home and you should definitely try this as a fun dessert. Definitely different, definitely exciting. Hi, my name is Stephanie. I am from Arizona, USA, and my ethnicity is Cambodian. And today I would like to share with you guys my favorite Cambodian corn dessert called babap boat, which translates to corn porridge. It is made with shredded corn, coconut milk and tapioca pearls. The coconut milk makes it very creamy and coconutty and then the sugar and the corn makes it very sweet and it is also eaten warm. I think that a lot of Cambodian Americans know about this dish because we see it a lot at gatherings whenever we have parties or any type of get together because it's just so easy and simple to make. I remember when I first tried this dessert, I was really young and I think that's what made me love corn so much. It's my favorite type of vegetable to have 
and since I am Cambodian American, food is the best way for me to connect to my culture. I think everyone should give this corn dessert a try, especially if you've never had a warm type of dessert before. It's very creamy, coconutty, and sweet. I hope you enjoy this dessert. I love tapioca pearls and I usually make it in this Indian dish called sabudana and I've never had it in a dessert even though I feel like traditionally tapioca for me like tapioca pudding is a dessert. So this is like a tapioca corn pudding. Very cool. Ha, oh, ha, that was hot, ha. Oh my God. I didn't think it was gonna be that hot. Oh. This is so good. Oh. <laughs> My goodness gracious. This might be one of my new favorite desserts. I just feel like corn in dessert, it's just not something I ever would have expected and I am so pleasantly surprised. I love it. It's so creamy and sweet, but not too sweet. The texture of the tapioca is perfection and then there's like a little bit of bite on the corn kernels. I'm loving it. If you can find tapioca pearls, make this dish. You will be happy <laughs> you did. Like me. I hope that you all enjoyed this episode and found some inspiration as it is corn season right now. I will see you all in my next video.